Hey everyone, we're doing seven mind mapping software reviews in seven days. This is day two, and we're talking about free mind. Let's do it! Hey everyone, Kevin Oxner here with your MakingMe.com. Now, today what we're doing here, this is day two of a seven day series. We're doing seven reviews of seven different mind mapping so pieces of software. Today we're talking about free minds and I wanted to get into it a little bit and let you know what it can do and maybe what it can't do. I'm Kevin Oxner and one of the things I was going to show you is I was going to show you how, how sweet this is, but I don't know why it makes my, my book look so gigantic. So there's probably something I can fix it with, but to start off with here, that's the gigantic diamonds and silver promo. I'm Kevin Oxner though with yourmakingme.com and as you can see, one of the cool things you can do in free mind is you can have links to things. So, and it's a simple one click link system. So we'll click on that. It'll fire up my browser. And there we go. And it'll take you right to any kind of website or any kind of, you can also files on your computer. That's a pretty cool thing you can look at. Let's go back to free minds and we'll get this closed up. Now I want to talk about some of the things I like. I'll talk about some of the features quickly so you know which version of FreeMind I'm using, etc, etc, etc. Right now I'm using, this is the, it's a release candidate to version 1.0.0. This says you need Java 1.4. At this point in 2013, you should already have at least that or more. And if not, because of all of the Java concerns, you should be upgrading to Java 7, which is the same as 1.7. This thing will work for Windows, Mac, Linux, and actually a couple of other different operating systems. And because it's had 16.7 million downloads so far, that's pretty good news. It shows you that there are a lot of people out there. I'll get into a couple of the reasons why that's really good as I go through some of the other suggestions. It also did do one thing that I wanted to point out here quick. It actually gave me a suggested maximum file size because I've run into this issue before where I'll make gigantic, huge mind maps and everything starts lagging, starts getting slow, but it gives me an idea of maybe where I can be at and how, how far is too far and maybe when I need to start a new map and all those good things. So for power users, it's really important. For the most part, these guys do a great job of letting you know all the information. I've got a huge list. It's a laundry list of things I like. I'm gonna go through some really fast. Just look through it as we go through. I might not touch on everything exactly, but they're all really, really cool things, okay? Now, first of all, control up and down. I like having, I always like having some way I can move my IDs up and down. That's how I like prioritizing things. So if I hold the control key and just go up and down. You can see I'm moving my, my idea up and down so I can help prioritize it. Alt up and down just will blow up the screen so we can make it bigger or smaller so we can see more or less. I can move the map anywhere I want just by grabbing anywhere in the background, left clicking and dragging and dropping it. That is a very, very nice feature. Just to be able to left click anywhere where there's not text and just give her. That's really, really good. I also like the idea of clicking on anywhere in a node to expand or collapse. So I'll go back to the, what I like. It takes one click to highlight it and then one click to close it. One click to expand it, one to close and contract it. Really, that's neat. It just works simply. You don't have to click a little plus button. Click anywhere on that node and it's going to work. I also like the fact that you can export to HTML with folding and all those little goodies. It's a little bit cluttered because they give you so many options as to what you can export to you have to make sure you probably the first couple times you do it, you figure out exactly what you need. But you've got tons of options here. And that's one of the best things about FreeMind is, is so there's so much customizability. There's so many options. There's just They throw a lot at you for a free program. I like the fact, too, that you can copy and paste the tab list. What I mean by that is simply, let me just I'll zoom out a little bit here. We're going to grab, I can grab the whole list. I can copy it. I'm hitting Control-C. I can go into, say, a Word document, and I can paste it. And it'll give me a tab list. So I can, if I figure out, feel this isn't working for me, I can just copy and paste it wherever I want. And alternately, I can grab a list that's all tabbed in beautifully, and I could paste it back into FreeMind, and it's going to look gorgeous like it does like this in, this in the spreadsheet. So I think that's a really, really nice idea. The Let's see what else I have here. I love that they have a weak spot section. They actually tell you, here, here are some of the weak spots that we have. You know, any company that's going to tell you what their, where their weaknesses are, that's awesome. Now, what, what they talk about is that um, their picture support is coming, the multi-user, the fancy graphics, those are all weak spots, and I, I actually I agree with them. I 100% agree with them. We'll get into that a little bit later on, but it's good. Here's the point I was talking about earlier where I said they have 16.7 million downloads to date since about 2000, and that's that with that many people, they have user-supported help forms. 
And so there's always going to be, I'm sure someone who's already asked the question you're going to have, but also there'll be people there willing and able to help answer any questions as you're getting up to speed on this kind of software. You also have the ability to restore a session. And by restoring a session, what that's going to mean for you is that it, when you open the program this time or the next time or the time after that, whatever you save so far is going to come back exactly how it was. A key point for me is the zoom. I hate when I've got a huge map and I have it all perfectly and I've got it zoomed out and then I close it, I open it and it's back to huge again. And it's not where I want it. This thing will save the zoom and that's really exciting for me. I also like the fact that beyond having a control Z where you, you can go back and you can undo things, control Q just jumps back to your recently edited notes and it doesn't undo them. So you can go back, you know, three or four or five, six edits ago. It doesn't undo it, but you can see what you've done. So you can actually backtrack without erasing anything you've just done. Really, that's that's exceptional. That's a good idea. You can hide the toolbars. I've, I've hit all the toolbars on the side. It's a nice clean look for displaying. It works nicely. The downside is that there's no shortcuts for this. So I have to actually go in and I can choose the toolbar. I can choose to add the secondary toolbar and you know whatever else you want to add. So you can choose to add these things. You know, to me, I would have would have been nice to have a quick toolbar, a quick shortcut. But you know, I'm not going to complain too much. You can also link to files. You can link to HTML files. You can link to files on your computer. You can link to like I did. You can actually drag and drop pictures right into it. So there are some a lot of great things I like. There really aren't that many things that I don't like about FreeMind. There are a few that I think in my mind are fairly significant though. For me, this is one of the reasons why I stopped using it back in, it was probably 2005, 2006, somewhere in that range, is the visual appearance. It works great. It seems like it has a lot of great intuitive features. Just the, the look just doesn't quite look 100% professional to me. You can modify pretty much everything on this, but just the whole look just isn't quite there and I wonder if maybe one of the next iterations they can get someone in here just to maybe tweak the fonts and whatever else they need to do to make it look just take that next step up. The other thing that I wasn't a fan of is that when I copy and paste it, it keeps the formatting. I had to go in and hit F2 and and then uh, you know, paste it into this and that way it gave me the similar look. Now it looks like they call this smart copying. I'm sure there's a way around it to do whatever you want. I'm not sure if I would have that on as a default setting. I'm sure it has some great applications. For me, though, I just I don't like having my, my formatting all out of whack on all my different programs. So it's nice to have the feature, but I'm not sure if I want to have it on turned on by default, at least in the very beginning. The other thing I'm not a fan of is that when I drag and drop, I can grab, I'll can i just grab this. I'm going to drag it down. It doesn't show me where it's going to be. It, it can I can move up. and What it'll normally do is it's going to highlight the spot. And I, I know when I see that the gray highlighting... I know it's going to appear above that line, but I'm just not sure if that's what I want. I, I'd rather see this line redrawn so I can see clearly where it's going. The last thing I want to talk about is smartphones. It's important these days that you need to have something where you can integrate with either tablets or smartphones. This doesn't have it, as far as I can tell, really. I know there are other programs, so you can you can export something and you open it up in another program. And I, I don't know, there wasn't a whole lot of mention about how it can interact. That to me is still a big deal. I would love to have something I can use on my phone and something that's going to work effectively too. Overall, I had a good experience with FreeMind. A couple of my overall thoughts. It's definitely much better than I remember in 2005. Okay, when I start used it, this is the very first mind mapping software I used. And it was okay, and it just didn't seem like it saved that well, and it was a little bit clunky and kind of ugly as I went off to other things. But it's got tons of features. This stuff does a lot of stuff for a free tool. I like the fact that it's very customizable. It has a super compact look. I just It's exciting when I know I can go in here and I can take out the toolbar and I can take out the secondary toolbar, and i got a completely clean look to this thing if I'm presenting or if I'm, mind, uh, if I'm brainstorming, you know, whatever it is I'm doing. Very, very nice. In my opinion, the internals of this program are very good. Again, just for me, it's more just the veneer on top that I wish they could just polish a little bit. Because I'm, I'm not a designer. I'm not going to sit there for hours and hours and start playing with things. It's for me, it needs to look really good out of the box. Overall, like I said, though, I think it's a solid product. And that's it for this review. Make sure you stay tuned. I, I am doing seven reviews in seven days. I'll have another review up on by tomorrow. Until next time, with your MakingMe.com, I'm Kevin Oxner.